for the writer Song Li Xin, the president of the Tenants Magazine. Okay, and uh, I believe everybody uh, will remember the World Cup Russia uh, <laughs> in July. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the lawyer fine of the friends, so I ask the the beautiful lady. He said. His answer is the only one is Russia. I'm so happy to see uh, the French won the championship. And uh, everybody knows the, the, the sports, this, this uh, World, uh, World Cup Russia cost uh, more than uh, 14, 14 million, 14, uh, 14 billion dollars. <laughs> it's the most uh, expensive in history. And uh, his uh, revenue is uh, more than $6 billion. Of course, one third is uh, from, was from the China, from the Chinese <laughs> re sponsor. So uh, everybody, every, uh, a lot of country want to have the mega events. But uh, after the second years, the economic growth will be slowed down. So today we will discuss how to exercise the rich enriching the international sports mega events. So I'm so glad uh, I'm so too glad to uh, introduce our uh, three three guests and uh, the minister of uh, uh, the, 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 three, the three guys from Japan, Russia, and China. This country, both of them, Four. yeah, both of them uh, have an uh, Olympic or World Cup. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm glad to introduce Hayama, ha, Hayashi. 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 <laughs> he, he's very busy because he is the minister of the education, sports, culture, and uh, science and technology. Science <laughs> and, uh, technology. <laughs> a lot of things, OK. So it's, uh, the beautiful lady is from Russia. He's a general director. Uh, he's uh, Tina, Tina Kandilak. Uh, Kandilak, uh, he is a <coughs> match TV general producer. And uh, I. Introduce the Xu Jicheng, Mr. Xu Jicheng. He's a, he have a, a, a many people will, will know about, <laughs> about him because. Basketball. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He's a deputy director of the media and the communication department of the IQC, Republic of, Republic of China. Uh, okay. And uh, the first question I want to ask the minister. Oh, pardon me, I will ask the question in Chinese. Okay. Great. So my question is, after 1964, after the Tokyo Olympic Games, Japan will soon be the host of the next Olympic Games. Just like I said, we, we do have the uh, valley effect uh, after the event because uh, uh, some of the short-term benefit will come, for example, uh, construction, communication, tourism. But after the second year of the event, the post-Olympic game event uh, effect uh, will come out. So there were a lot of concerns of holding this type of mega event because we are making double-digit dollars to uh, as the investment with uh, comparatively speaking little revenue. Uh, however, why the Japanese people decide to have another session of Olympic Games. So let's uh, give him a very warm welcome. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Miss Son. 
And uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really delighted yeah. to be invited to uh, this uh, summer Davos in Tenshin. And uh, fortunately, much cooler than in Tokyo here in Tenshin. It's 24 degrees centigrade, whereas in Tokyo still there's a 30 degrees centigrade. So thank you for the nice weather. And uh, 1964, uh, Japan's, Japanese economy was still developing, like uh, not a double digit, but maybe like China now, like six, five, seven percent uh, growth. So in those days, the hard legacy, we name it, uh, was a very important. So for 1964, we built a super bureau train, and also we built a super express highway surrounding the Tokyo metropolitan area. So, and then that has a many, many years effect, effect and bring so many efficiency uh, for uh, our metropolitan Tokyo. So that was a big uh, legacy, but still that's a, that's a hardware. So uh, in the next 2020, we are seeing more soft legacy than hard legacy because we have so many in infrastructure already. So rather than just having more road or more bureau train, uh, we are trying to have uh, what we call the uh, soft legacy, like uh, inbound. We are s seeing the increase of the inbound already. Everybody would like to come to Tokyo to enjoy some sake and sushi and tempuras and the sightseeing. But that Olympic game will bring more people. And then when they come to Tokyo, they will be maybe not wa only watching the games, yeah. but enjoy all those uh, sightseeing and Japanese cuisine. So that will increase the trend of already increasing trend of inbound to Japan. And also to aiming 2020, we are now getting ready for auto, auto automobile, <laughs> auto driving. So uh, maybe you will see in Tokyo Olympic game that uh, some of the taxis and automobiles will be driving without any driver. Yeah. So <laughs> wow. those are the one legacy, wow. right? Yeah. And also for that, we need another infrastructure for auto droid. So those are the things that we are really aiming for as a soft legacy, less than hard legacy we had in 1964. So in total, Tokyo Metropolitan Government, which is hosting the 2020 Tokyo game, that the legacy impact will be 20, uh, 12 trillion yen, which is about uh, 108 billion US dollar. And uh, with that, uh, economic uh, ripple effects estimated by input output table will be 18 trillion yen, yeah. uh, which is about 161 billion US dollar. Yeah. So not only those uh, 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 income by TV broadcasting or uh, sales of the goods, we are really looking uh, forward to see all those soft legacy, and not only the Olympic year, but after yeah. one, two, three decades after the Olympic game. Okay. Okay. Am okay. I speaking too, yeah. too quick? No? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, however, however, as you've just mentioned, for the previous Olympic Games, uh, you have read the double-digit GDP increase. Uh, however, uh, I believe that uh, currently you are still having a great economic momentum. And uh, I know that after the Olympic Games, your uh, property price has been dropped. I don't know if you feel the same. Yeah, uh, we see the uh, bubble days and then bubble burst, so which is uh, maybe one, two decades after the Olympic game. Uh, so we will be uh, seeing the uh, uh, forecasting not so much uh, downward trend of the asset because in those uh, bubble days and bubble burst days, uh, Tokyo especially yeah. uh, experienced the downward uh, of the price. So stock price was almost uh, one third or one fourth at the top of the bubble and then the, uh, at the dip. And then uh, after Aben mix for five years, we yeah. came from the uh, bottom to uh, uh, the situation now. 
and also that applies to the asset price like land price. So we don't see many room for going down of the asset price even after uh, the Olympic game because uh, towards the Olympic game we already have two years only. But there's not such a big boom of the land asset price towards the Olympic game. So that means the land price, asset price is not in a bubble situation for the Olympic game. So that's why we don't see any big reason for a bubble bust after the 2020. Okay. Okay. So, uh, because, uh, well, you've just mentioned about the five years, um, it's a fair price to pay uh, because after the Olympic Games, uh, the Japanese people have become more and more uh, focused on their uh, practical increase of the economy. So next question would be uh, for Tina. Okay. So, Tina, the question for you. For the World Cup that just ended, what impressed you the most? And also, as I just mentioned, we talked about uh, more than $15 billion investment. That is very expensive. So, how do you comment on that? How do you comment on this most expensive thing? First of all, thank you very much for having me here. Um, I want to say that Tianjin is a beautiful town, really. And if we talk about weather, the weather is the same in Moscow now. That's <laughs> unbelievable, because in Moscow now we have 24, 25 degrees. Oh. You can't believe in this, because everybody's uh, thinking that Moscow is the cold town. No, same weather here, same weather in Moscow. About atmosphere and about my impressions. Of course, as a Russian, I never be so proud of my country because atmosphere, attitude, people, smell, singing, everything is still in my heart. And I think that I would remember this experience all my life. But you mentioned a very important thing, like a journalist, numbers. Because atmosphere is very good, but the always question is, what if this atmosphere costs so much, what we can take from this atmosphere? Which kind of profit we can make with this atmosphere? And because I was knowing that this question should be appear on this stage, I prepared some interesting numbers. I think that you never heard about these numbers, but it's the first results that we have in our country. For example, I took like example, Moscow, like a capital city. Let's talk about them. For example, for many uh, ordinary Russians, uh, this was uh, something completely new. Many of them uh, never had to meet foreigners. Now, if we talk about foreigners, nearly 4.5 million people suddenly arrived only in the capital city. It's only Moscow. They were curious to go out onto the streets and uh, meet with these people. That's a good thing, because now we have this experience, how to meet a large number of tourists. Interesting thing, another one that I want to underline. Look at another things. Uh, for example, first and foremost, the infrastructure. Just to highlight a few uh, statistics. 20% of the entire land transport, tra transportation network was updated. Mm. It's an uh, amazing thing. You know, in nowadays, everybody who are appears somewhere try to find the Wi-Fi, yeah? I want to tell you something. In Moscow, if you should be in the metro, it's the 24-7 Wi-Fi. You can easily connect, and in the metro, not only the station, since you are sitting in the metro okay. and you are using the metro, you can have a Wi-Fi. Okay. It's an unbelievable thing. I know that it's only in our capital city, and in some towns that we started to do this project. Another thing, uh, two major hospitals were renovated. Capacity uh, at airports was increased by 50%. When I was coming here, you know, I'm 20 years living in Moscow. I can stand the crowd. It was incredible. Uh, international crowd in the Moscow airport. And I was standing 30 <laughs> minutes near the exit. Not in the airport, near the exit. That's a result too. 47,000 additional jobs were created. That's important, mainly in construction and services. Two training grounds were built and six more were reconstructured. 
And uh, what else? Interesting about, for example, about uh, tourist numbers and about particularly Chinese. I think that you would be interesting. Uh, one thing, first of all, let me underline. Who came to Moscow grew the number of the tourists for 56% in comparing with 2017. It's a huge number, 56%. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I told you that 4.5 million tourists visited the capital city, and which were from the beautiful big part from the beautiful country China. About China, interesting numbers. For example, it was something of uh, 500,000 people who came from China to Russia. And uh, let's talk about shopping, about numbers too, because I was amazed when I get these numbers. Main shopping streets, Chinese people spent over, uh, please careful, spent over one, around one million dollars only on one street. <laughs> Not in the Moscow, only on one shopping street. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, the, be, uh, the next biggest spenders. Street, yes. Yeah. <laughs> China Avenue. <to> see. <laughs> Let's talk about next biggest spenders after Chinese. Uh, they are Mexicans and Americans. Oh. Chinese are the best one. That's why <laughs> welcome to the Moscow, welcome to the Russia. <laughs> Another thing, uh, big brands like Gucci and Louis Vuitton, it was interesting because they reported that uh, their sales, uh, they increased in two, three times. Never had been before. Another interesting thing, for example, GRP. You talk about GRP and you mentioned the GRP. What about GRP? GRP of Moscow alone increased by 2%, while tourism led to increased revenues of over 30%. Moreover, around $3 billion were earned by small and medium-sized businesses. Because all these businesses, when we start to prepare for World Cup, start to appear. That's why they earn this money. And over than $220 million in additional income for the city of Moscow. And as you know, it was 11 cities, not only Moscow. I take only one example to show you what is this result. Because everybody are scared, it's called the white elephant. I know that white elephant after World Cup and big mega sport event that a country spends a lot of money and then can't make a profit, big profit to can compare with this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, prices that it spends on these mega events. And the last thing that I want to say, uh, to answer the question, uh, how we can evaluate the return of investment from international sport mega events, our experience shows that mega the economic, social, cultural impacts brings huge benefits to the country. In our case, it gives a much needed boost to our economy. It's the first thing. Second thing, it helps to change people's opinions about Russia and perceptions about Russia. Because you people, tell me please, who have been in the Moscow or in the Russia since the World Cup? Raise your hands. Who have been in Moscow? Only you. I think that two persons are from Russia. Yeah. Uh, are you? Uh, six two persons. Them? Yeah. yeah six, and one, please, two, three, four, five, you have to come to Russia. Now we are unbelievably convenient country orientated on tourism. That is important too, because it never had been, and people saw that there is still snow in the Moscow. As I say, same weather in Tianjin and in Moscow. Now, you have to come right now, right here after Davos. <laughs> and in my opinion, in motivated and inspired young people, young people is our future. They should build new countries. Yeah. They should be yeah. fu build future for our country. And it inspires them to do a great things in the world. And sport, it's always what it's important to underline, why it's important for big nations and big <coughs> countries. It unites people, no matter which kind of religion you support, which kind of nationality you are, how many, how old are you, no matters. Because sport unites all world. And that's why we need these mega events. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Tina. Okay. Thank you, Tina. I just want to add something. The passion is still there. It's, uh, that's the sports people. Yeah. <laughs> and also that's the change or the sports can uh, influence the okay. beautiful ladies like this, <laughs> okay. like Tina. Okay. So uh, I think all the, the statistics, all, yeah. all, the, uh, all the numbers just uh, presented by Professor, by Tina, just to show that one of the key points in our topic today is uh, World Cup, or Olympic game, whatever the big events or major events, is not a burden of economic. It's a part of the economic. So there's the book written by, uh, by a German 
is uh, also is called Olympic economy. Mm-hmm. And the forward, in the forward, the, uh, the life honorable president of the IOC, International Olympic Committee, Jacques Roger, Jacques Roger, Jacques Roger, he wrote at the Olympic game or major sports events played a catalyst to the development and the redevelopment of the city. It brings not only the income of the, the, the money, but also, like Tina just mentioned, inspire young generations, young peoples, and it just uh, is the big promotion of the city, of the country, and especially tell the world and what the country and what Moscow and what Russia have, re- have achieved in the last couple of years. So uh, I covered Olympic game, Paralympic game, youth game since 1988, 40 years. Is it? So I still remember when Korea, when, when Seoul beat for the Olympic games, the GDP of the country ranked 21 in the world. Yeah. So after the game, within half years, and it reached to the 12th in the world. So 12th is uh, one of the very important mark line. That means uh, averagely, the Olympic host city in the country, the country's GDP should be averaged in the top 12 in the world. Mm-hmm. Or you got the potential to reach the top, top 10, can host a perfect, a good Olympic game. The economics goes up and down, but the legacy, just like a Professor has mentioned, is it goes forever. It goes forever. That's why it's the pink, That's why at Japan, when the economics goes rapidly, you got your first game, and now you got the chance to redevelop to Tokyo and to reshape your economy. You got the chance to host it. You are the, the first country in Asia. In, the, in East Asia to host the Olympic game and the winter game. And Korea is the second yeah. to host the Olympic game and the winter game. And China is the third. But orderly speaking, the economy, is the development, is in this shape, is, is listed. So uh, what we are talking about today is uh, it's a part of the, uh, the, 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 the economy. So that's why we call it uh, sports industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a good thing. So it's not yeah. a burden. Yeah. It's okay. It's not okay. a burden. Uh-huh. Uh, indeed. So I think all the three panelists are very optimistic about the overall impact of uh, major sports events on the economy. But uh, internationally, I think the opinions are divided. So my question to Mr. Xu is that we have seen some different opinions on China's very active bidding for hosting international games. So do, do we have a reasonable return? I should say... Uh, it was to host it for the third and the fourth time. Why, you know? Yeah. Uh, nowadays, is the, uh, is the, sad, uh, the Olympic beating or Olympic hosting uh, came into a very dark age as no city want to host it. It's a misunderstanding or it's the misled by the media. I worked as a media. And my job in the Olympic uh, Organizing Committee is the media operation. So I know the media very much. But nobody just, uh, re- uh, just uh, started is a deeply, fully about the new normal or Olympic agenda 2020. Olympic agenda 2020 in Chinese is called uh, uh, and also the new normal. Yeah. The casings of the new normal is to uh, value or to add the value to flexibility, to a partnership, efficiency, and the sustainability. I don't know uh, my uh, our, our translators got it rightly in Chinese. It's called "要增加灵活性, <laughs> 要增加合作性, 要增加效率。要增加可持续, uh, but what to reduce 
is to reduce the cost, reduce the complexity, reduce the risk, reduce the waste. So uh, then according to the new normal, the IOC will just evaluate the bidding city before the final vote. Because uh, if five cities or more, six cities, 10 cities to bid the game, there's only one winner. But that means the work could produce the nine losers. So usually it will, it will tell the cities if you are not strong enough in the competition, they will vote how about the next time. This, in this way, they will save huge money for the bidding city. For each of the bidding city, for each bid for the Olympic, it cost about uh, 100 million US dollars. So that's why it's, so it's, it's an active ways to reduce the burden of the bidding, bidding city, not, not just because no, no city wants to bid the game. It's after the Pyeongchang game and within one week, and the, the bidding city for the next Winter Olympic Games after Beijing has reached to seven okay. because Pyeongchang announced that after the closing ceremony, within five days, said the balance, the budget is balanced. That is about one point, uh, let's say it's 136 million US dollars. The budget is that, the income is all that. So, uh, <laughs> unbelievable, because Ping Chang just uh, reduced all the cost, used a lot of a temporary tent, you see, instead of the, uh, you see, the large complexity buildings. But to, to tell the truth, when I came into the Meijiang Convention Center here, you see, I've been in Tianjin many times, but this is the first time I came into the inside of the uh, conference hall like this is far more good enough than host the Olympic game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Trust great. me. It's even bigger than the Beijing IBC, that means the International Central. Broadcasting Center. Central, yeah. <laughs> bigger and larger and even modern. So doesn't mean that you host the Olympic game, the facility is only used once for Olympic game. Mm. It will use the is the forever after the game. So during Beijing's bid, uh, when the evaluation committee and to go to Beijing and do the venue tour over there, and when they go to the CNCC, China National Convention Center, it was the IBC, I think many of our media friends work there, and uh, they found that the schedule, the schedule is like the backdrop over here. It's all red. That means all occupied, as the customer just ordered and their exhibition to the year of 2032. Mm -hmm. So they just gave a new name to such a huge, huge beauty. Mm -hmm. And they call it the right, uh, red elephant. Mm -hmm. You know in the Olympic history, I think Professor knows, <laughs> there's a the special term called white elephant. Mm -hmm. But the turnout in Beijing is the, is the, is the Red elephant, that means the in fully used. Mm -hmm. Tell another date to, to share with our friends. Is three years after the Olympic game, and the Olympic grain, you know the Olympic grain with the bird nest, the water cube, all the things over there? The yearly income is higher than China's film yearly income. Let me uh, echo with Mr. Xu that the uh, main Olympic stadium in Tokyo Built in 1964, when used, uh, have been used almost half a century. Half a century. Up until two years ago, uh -huh. when we renewed that for the 2020. Huh? It's now being built. But I, as a child, went there and <laughs> used that many times. So it was used 50 years. Yeah. So, and also Pyeongchang things is a very phenomenal, cost breaking. Olympic game, like uh, Mr. Xu says. So that's why, uh, yeah. uh, so, sorry, that's why uh, mm. Mr. Bach okay. mm -hmm. said that Ping Chang set up the new horizon yes. for the Olympic Games. And horizon should be kept because uh, we had just had a three ministers meeting last week in Tokyo with China, 
in Korea and Japan for sports minister. So, and the Pyeongchang Olympic Games, all the records and know-how uh, get into one book, uh, which would be like a Olympic fire. No. That was, like. Yeah, like a flag. <laughs> that would be being from Pyeongchang to Tokyo to Beijing. Yeah, to Beijing. So that's we decided to share. In so Beijing meeting. got a great pressure. Right, yeah. <laughs> so this, yeah. This, uh, in the summer, I have a big conversation, an interview with Mr. Gianni Infantino. And uh, there are another thing uh, that, like a uh, person who were in charge with media, you know, the prices on rights, they are increasing okay. every tournament yeah. to tournament. Why? Because it's interesting. Yeah, uh, if it's uh, so many things to scare, why the prices are increasing? because uh, the audience are increased unbelievably. The ceremony of opening and uh, for closing attended by one billion people for each. Every game since the World Cup was watched by the 200 million people in the world. That's why the number of sponsors are unbelievable. That's why for the market, because for the TV, for the media, for everybody of us, it's important to have some stage where we can make a presentation for the big sponsors. It's the biggest chance, and I completely agree with you. For some countries, it's always uh, the difficult thing because it's the black elephant, let's call it, because nobody knows what it should bring to country. But for the other countries who can increase all their markers, it's always possibility. It depends on country, it depends on people, and depends on people who are in charge. Yes, okay. so, so far, the Olympic game and, I mean, the summer Olympic game, mainly because there are four Olympic Games. Mm. Summer game, winter game, mm. summer youth game, and winter youth game. Mm. Summer game and the World Cup are the two unique, unmatched events in the world. Every penny you put it inside, and you invest it inside, it will be paid off three or four times. It's as, a big as, showcase. As you know, one number that I want to mention, I think that you know about this, that Qatar, uh, who should be uh, next, uh, uh, country where the World Cup uh, should be happens, uh, they uh, have a budget 200 billion dollars. <laughs> I was there, you know, I was there. It's very interesting experience. They built a town, really a town for the World Cup. <laughs> they completely changed all infrastructure, starting for the water infrastructure, because it's interesting, they can move by the water, uh, finishing with the metro. They did the things that they never had did before. And I asked them, it's unbelievable budget, can't compare with anybody in the world. Okay. And they told me, you know what? Because they start to compete for a tourist. And you are quite right uh, that if it starts for the long-term things, of course, you can attend for the result like a kid, and then in your Middle Ages, you should be still using this infrastructure. And amortization of this infrastructure, that's a very important financial thing yes. that can be counted. In Qatar, they're doing it very wisely, and that should be next very interesting okay. experience. Okay. Well, I think they are very united uh, as for convincing me, uh, like I'm questioning all of them. Well, I think uh, still I'm the, uh, I can recall that uh, we are uh, applying for the Olympic Games. Uh, Back then, we have the slogan of the one world, one dream, and China then become more international. But still, I believe there are a lot of uh, people are having questions. So now I would like to open the floor to receive questions. Uh, if you would like to ask some more questions, uh, taking my set for more questionings, because we know uh, Tina has been always very exciting. She is still in the hot atmosphere as in July. Uh, but as for the uh, minister of uh, uh, Yushimasa, uh, you will be in another Olympic Games, uh, so you will be very exciting. And also for Mr. Xu, you have been there uh, for Olympic Games, for two sessions of Olympic Games. Therefore, you are very optimistic and very enthusiastic uh, about uh, having uh, the long-term benefit of having, uh, of organizing the mega event. Uh, even if we don't have the balance of investment and the revenue for the short time, this will still be a thing worthwhile investing. So let's open the floor. 
Uh, thank you. Um, it's very interesting to get this panel uh, on on basically innovation uh, focused um, event. Um, so I have a, a question um, uh, to Tina. Um, so uh, my name is Yaroslav. I, I come from Ukraine, um, and um, in our country we were really concerned about what was happening recently, both politically but also in the field of sport. So you mentioned like some things, like how Russia is great, how many like income it generated for the business, um, and how many people opened uh, your country. Uh, but my, my question is, how ethical is that, to your point, like having the country involved in war conflict uh, and hosting that major event? Like, do you think, is it like ethical stuff? And do you think like promoting um, politics under sport is fine? Thanks. Thank you, Aristotle, first of all, for your question. <coughs> That's a very good question because I heard this question for many Ukrainian journalists a lot of time. And you know what is the big plus of the World Cup? And I think that you have to learn it. Why uh, Olympic Games are appear? You know, historically. As you know, and all Ukrainian viewers know me, I was the host of the Brainiest. And it was a very good question that I always gave to kids. How Olympic Games are based? You know why they based that all wars, all conversation about wars, all conversation about political degrees are stopped in this moment because all big sport events can only unite people. That's why I was always amazed when this, this fantastic uh, tournament, these questions are appeared because it's the time when people should unite in many different ways. And I think that you have to do it too. That's why I never think about the political disagreement since the World Cup. I only think about political opportunities that the World Cup gives Russia and all world. Thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, if may I uh, say something about this? And uh, sports is always in the shadow of, the, of politics because the big events, major events, is uh, such a huge and the powerful platform. So some of the times and the people like to talk about the politics with sports. But what we should do is a separate sports and separate the sports with the politics. It's two different things. Because just like the slogans in Beijing games, one word, one dream, you see. But historically, each of the Olympic Games got some politic issues in it, but that never stopped the steps of the uh, major events like Olympic Game or World Cup, just like Tina has just mentioned, because the same, because the dream is a piece, just like in the uh, uh, just like in the Pyeongchang Games, you remember, North Korea and South Korea, they matched into the stadium with the same flag, you see, with the Peninsula's flag. And now, Olympic game, one of the big fruit for the Pyeongchang games is uh, not how much money they earn, not how much money knows that Pyeongchang is uh, one of the, uh, the tourists for the snow sports. Uh, it's about the two sides of Korea. Till this morning, you see, the two presidents yeah. meet together. Why, we look it at, uh, why don't we look it at uh, activity? as a positive ways. And just the sports is the same, but we can use it for different purpose. Thank That's you. my suggestion. You see. It was a very okay. good example because I'm so sorry, I can a little bit continue. It was a big fight. If the guys who like boxing know their names, biggest fighter, Kavalev and Dusik. Usik was Ukrainian citizen. I was attend to this uh, boxing show. And Dusik okay. win in the center of the That's Russia, in the capital of Moscow. He win, and Ukraine and Athen was played in the place where this tournament happened. All Russian citizens stand up and support this winner. Because what is important in sport and what possibilities sport give us? It's always a little bit up of politics. It's always give us chance. Don't take it, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bruce Leslie. I'm representing the city of Calgary. 
a past host of an Olympic Games and also oh, potentially okay. a future host of, a, of the 2026 Games. Um, Tina, I have to ask a question of, uh, you mentioned, uh, uh, first of all, I should mention that our bid, as it is, should it come through, is going to be quite a bit more modest than anything that we're talking about here. And I think it's part of that uh, Olympic 2020 that you mentioned. Um, but you, Tina, you mentioned that Qatar's budget, did I, did I hear you say that it was 200 billion? For Qatar? For Qatar. Yeah, sure. Now, and you also said in the same sentence that that was a wise investment. In Qatar? Yeah. In my opinion, you have been in Qatar? No. Uh, <laughs> that's I, I, just, I, I guess my question is, no, when no, no. does it become unsustainable? Um, when you're spending that kind of money and the opportunity costs, we're looking at a maybe $6 billion Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. um, is, doesn't there have to be a change in the direction of the spending? Uh, uh, that's, you know, because I'm a journalist, first of all, it's always a little trick when you ask the person, you know, have you been there? But that's an important uh, key, because if you have been there, you have much more opinion based on facts not on emotions. I have seen with my own eyes the completely different country. It's unbelievable project, starting with Zaha Hadid, uh, God raised her soul uh, in the past, with unbelievable construction of the stadium, finishing with this uh, metro project. And they have a very good formula for how to return their money. If you will want to comment this Qatar factor, we have to be deeply in the content based on facts. They, I think that Davos should have uh, brilliant possibilities to have here Hassan Al-Tawadi, the head of the committee of uh, uh, World Cup. He can tell you about which kind of formula they prepare. They are not the people who are spend their money easily. They invest in their own country, but with a long-term return. And they know what they do, believe me. You have to go to Qatar. Sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sir, uh, may I uh, tell some of the, uh, my own experiences? That, yes, for a uh, journalist, uh, for the first 10 or 20 years, I just always think the Olympic cost is so big, the budget. The budget is always the top topic. It's the before the game, during the game, and after the game. But till the 2005, I joined the organizing committee. I, I go to the other side of the river, and from the journalist, from a, from a guy to ask questions. Should I go on there? And from the other side, the, the cost for Olympic game is very easy to figure out. One day, 100 million US dollars. One day, 100 US million dollars. That is the operation phase for that. Hmm. It's a 70 days. It's very easy to figure out. That is the budget Olympic Games cost. All the others is the relative or, or non-relative. All the others is the city spent to build the city or redevelop the city. Olympic use it for Beijing the airport, T3, Terminal 3, the highway, and all the, all the new buildings and venues. And after the Olympic Games, the, the city will still continue to use that. That's, that part is called sustainability. So it's very clear, the two parts of the budget. Okay. Uh. All right, we've just got the reminder of the last three minutes for this session. So maybe we can invite uh, this lady to ask a question. And hopefully the last question will be a very short question. Yes, we're talking about the, the uh, financial benefit or return on investment, uh, but we haven't really discussed the uh, social impact. Because Olympic Games or similar Games World Cup promote grassroots uh, sports. I just wanted to ask the, uh, the three of you that have you seen the real benefit on the social impact and how the Olympics and other big games has helped children with their future, especially with their sports future. Thank you. So last question, maybe I can pop it to the minister. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's a very good point. I think uh, we uh, already set up the sports plan in preparation for Olympic Games so that uh, the ratio of the adult in Japan playing sports once a week is still 42.5 
5%. So it's less than 50%. So towards the Olympic game, we are trying to increase this to 65%. And that will help make themselves very healthy, not only the top street, but everybody, including ladies and gentlemen, and young and old. And especially for those old people, participating in the sports is very nice because the, uh, we have a long longevity, in Japanese. Uh, women lives up to 90 years old, and men lives up to 80 to 3. But that is the uh, longevity as a, uh, uh, as a life. But uh, you are not healthy last uh, seven years or five years. So we are trying to extend the healthy longevity of Japanese. And to that end, uh, being included in the sports activity is really crucial. So that's one. And another point is the uh, Paralympic effect. Because the uh, 1964 is the first Olympic game goes with, went with Paralympic. So that Tokyo is hosting the second Olympic and Paralympic together in 2020. So towards that, we are already starting the inclusive society so that uh, already I see in these one to three years that the TV commercial is using not only Olympic athletes, but also Paralympic athletes. That sells. So the society mindset is changing to accept, and not only accept, treating equal with the Paralympic and Olympic athletes and the concept together. So this is a big social impact, I think. Well, thank you. I, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, questions unanswered and also many exciting insights from the panel. But I apologize for uh, not having enough time to address all of the questions. So we have been doing a lot of math on the stage. Uh, how much it costs and uh, how much return it can generate. But I think not everything can be calculated in economic terms. Uh, all the major events we have followed in the past decades are just like the girls and boys we chased back in school. They will leave a very deep impression and imprint on our future life and also generate continuous social impact. So thank you all for your attention.